Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create an FPS game in Unity and welcome to episode 11. This tutorial we are going to add in a couple of colliders on some of our objects and we're also going to revisit animation and create some doors which open for us. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and click on the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and everything else on game development on my channel. And if you've enjoyed this series so far, please feel free to check me out on Patreon or YouTube memberships where you'll earn things like early access, exclusive content, project files and so much more. With that in mind, let's get to work. So I have tweaked the post-processing ever so slightly since the last tutorial. Uh, it, it doesn't really matter too much, to be honest. But what we're going to do first is just add a couple of colliders, because at the moment, we can walk straight through this barrel. We can walk straight through this barrel. And we can walk straight through this crate. Obviously, that's not good for our game. So you'll come across many objects um, within development, uh, whether you get them from the asset store or you've created them, they may not necessarily have colliders on. Now we have briefly talked about colliders, especially when it comes to physics. So we just need to briefly add some to these objects. So let's click this uh, sci-fi barrel here, add component. Let's go to physics. And because it's a very simple shape in its sense, I'm just gonna add a box collider. That's all there is to it. You can add something like a mesh collider if you want to, but adding a mesh collider may use up more resources than you really would like. The reason being is simply because it's creating more actual colliders than just the simple one that we have here. Most of the time, as I say, a simple collider will do the trick for all of this. So once again, physics, and let's go to collider. And finally, on this crate over here, let's add this to, and there we go. So now, we should not be able to walk through these things. Cool. There we go. Um, one thing I have just noticed, though, I might want to increase the light just a little bit on my weapon. Not quite convinced. There we go. Okay, a little tweak there. So let's create some doors. So I think I mentioned last time I want to have some doors somewhere here uh, that open. So let's create some doors right here. Let's go to textures and I'm going to drag and drop this texture right here, which you can get on my website as always. Head over there, downloads and assets, go to the FPS series and tutorial number 11. You can download it there for free. So this door is going to be one that slides open. I want to have two. I want to have a door here and a door here, and they both slide in opposite directions. That's the plan, at least. Um, let's allow ourselves to see a little bit better because it's a bit dark here. So remember last tutorial with the post-processing, we toggled it on. Let's now toggle it off so we can see a little better. And you can really see just how much that post-processing has changed how our game looks. It, it is absolutely amazing. Hopefully yours looks a lot better than mine does. You spent more time. So let's create those doors. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this wall right here and duplicate it. I'm going to drag it outwards to here and I'm going to rename it. Let's call this left door. And I'm going to shrink this down to roughly half of the size um, on the uh, Z, I think. So let's change it to five so it shrinks it. And let's also shrink it on the Y to five. And we're also going to need to change it on the X as well because it is quite <laughs> big. That's, that's no door, is it? So let's change it to 0 0.25. And while we're on this now, let's go to edit and let's go to snap settings. And I'm going to change this to 0 0.25. So I can actually snap this to the correct position to keep everything neat and tidy. So this door is going to go there, flush against the wall. Let's bring it down, flush against the floor. There we go. And let's bring it forward, flush against the wall there. But it doesn't necessarily have to be. As I said, I just moved it inward a bit. In fact, I want to move it in just a little bit more. There we go. Now, the reason I've done this is because I want it to look a little bit better than what it actually is. Um, 
now let's attach this door. So drag and drop. Awesome. Looks terrible right now. Let's change that. So let's create a duplicate of this. Hold control, press D. Now let's change this to door 001. Oops. Make sure you don't delete door 001. Uh, underscore N. And let's have this as a normal map. And I'm going to create from grayscale on this one and click apply. And the door now, I think we could probably do with reversing it because it has turned the wrong way around, as we can see. So let's uh, change this on 180. Ooh, that's not what I wanted. Oh, it's because it already is. Okay, so we just need to rotate uh, a little bit more. So really, here's a, good, uh, here's a good little trick. So let's use the rotate tool and let's rotate it that way. So you can do that. Uh, a little bit more and you can see that's roughly what it should be so it should be 180 on the x and you can see that door is now how it should be uh, i can't remember if we've actually used the rotate tool we may have gone through it at some point anyway let's now add that normal map to our material so drag and drop over here and you can see it looks a little bit more metallic let's change the source to albedo increase the metallic and decrease the smoothness and I'm going to press play and see how that actually looks right now. Yep, I'm quite happy with how that looks. But again, you can really see how post-processing can change just everything. So we are going to cheat a little bit as well. We're going to use a very simple cube to do a lot of things. Here. I mean, already we're just using cubes and it actually looks kind of cool. So I'm going to take this left door, hold control, press D to duplicate it, change it to right door and I'm sure you can guess what I'm going to do now I'm going to slide it to there and I'm going to take off that rotation so both doors look like they slide open together oh and the cool thing is they are they look like they're misaligned because they're upside down so let's actually take this time and let's rotate um, on the Z by 180 and 180 again on the X, so you can just play around with it. Let's do by 90 on the Y. Uh, let's change this to 0.25, and let's change that to 5. In fact, that should be 5 as well. Uh, and that should be 0.25. Um, but I, I think the what I'm trying to illustrate here is just how much you can really influence what the game can look like. I mean... It, it's kind of cool that it's backwards. I guess, you know, it's up to you if you want to have it like that. They are misaligned. Um, <laughs> you know, in fact, do you know what? I am actually going to play around with this a little bit more because I really want to kind of show you guys how things can really change when you reverse them. So we can see here um, that every side has uh, the correct kind of visual. But we'll notice that the large section of the door handle is at the bottom. But on this side, it's at the top. On this side, it's at the top. And on this side, it's at the top as well. And on this side, it's actually at the bottom. Now, what this ultimately means is that no matter what, I, I don't think either way will um, match up. But there is something really clever you can do with materials. So if uh, we set it back to how it was, which is, I think that's about right, isn't it? Yeah, both doors are aligned. Now, if we take the material that is attached to it, and it is this one, let's hold control, press D, and it's now called door 0011. If we attach that material to our second door, we can actually change how this looks just by doing that. Now, as, as I tried to, um, or rather, as when I moved it around, I should say, you could see that things didn't quite match. And the reason for that is because the inverse of this texture isn't seamless both ways, where it is if we play around with the tiling. So if you want to create the same effect I've done, um, where they are slightly mismatched, if you want to do that, you can. If you want to do it the same way that I'm going to do it now, all you need to do is create that second material and tile it correctly. And we'll come back to tiling um, at some point, probably fairly soon. 
Um, it's because it's really cool what you can do with the material. So both of these doors are now aligned. Let's add this cube over here. Well, when I say cube, it's actually the wall. So hold control, press D, bring it over here. So everything is still aligning up correctly. And if we press play and go to the door itself, it looks like it is just going straight into the wall. But we can actually, like I said earlier, we're going to cheat a little bit and use a cube. So if we go to game object, let's go to 3D object and cube. And I'm going to align this cube roughly with the door. So only a very small amount of it pokes out from where the door is. And we're going to resize this. So it's going to be about a six tall, I think. And we'll make it a little bit thinner on the X, so 0.5 maybe, and just drag it to about there. Now, the reason we're doing this is because we're making it visually look like it's going into a hole rather than the wall itself. That means we're now going to have to create a special material for this. So let's right click, create, and let's go to material right here. And let's call this black matte. Matte, just short for material. Uh, let's change the color to black and let's attach it to the cube itself. And I'm going to change it to albedo alpha, set the metallic quite high and keep the smoothness quite high as well. So you can see now that it does look like it's going into some kind of gap inside the wall. And if I bring it down just a little bit, and then obviously the same can be done for the other side. So hold control, press D, bring it over to there. And let's press play. And if we head over, we can see it looks like it's going into a gap in the wall. So next step is for us to quickly animate these and see how it looks. So let's go to our animations. Let's right click, create, folder. We'll call this environment. And in here is any environmental uh, animations that we use. So let's create another folder and call this metal doors. So in here, let's create that animation. Firstly, let's click on the left door. Let's click on animation. Let's click create. And we'll say left slide and click save and then click record. Obviously, we want to set that first keyframe. Uh, and because we're doing this solely on the position of the door itself, we need to just quickly type over these as the default position. So minus 10.5, uh, 0, now let's put 3, and then 12.5. So that is the default frame. Now, I want these doors to slide over, let's say, let's say they'll open over the course of 3 seconds, which is frame 180. And by frame 180, we want the door to be about there. Just the handle showing, so that's fine. So press the record button. And then let's press play and see how this looks. So it will loop the animation over and over. So could you imagine this if we had you know, a bit of ambience, we had the grinding noise of the door opening. Let's do the same with the right door. So once again, right door, let's go to um, animation. Let's click on create and right slide and save. Let's click the record button. Let's type minus 10.5. Let's have three and 17.5. And now by frame 180, which is also three seconds, we want our door to be there. And then let's press the record button to stop. Press play and see how this animation looks. Yeah, cool. I'm quite happy with how that's going so far. So next tutorial, what I think we're going to do is we're going to have a button on the wall which we're going to be able to press to open those doors. So we're going to deal a little bit more with UI. Basically, we're going to deal with interactable objects. So until that next tutorial, you keep building, uh, you keep designing. You know, if you want to do some more on that post-processing, go ahead and do so. 
Uh, I, I really am quite shocked how different it looks in the, from scene view to game view. So yeah, until the next tutorial, guys, thank you very much for watching.